today we take a look at the K8200 3D printer, 7 years on. Okay, in this shot we've got the underside of the heated bed platform or the bed platform on the K8200. The first and most notable change for those familiar with this 3D printer is the base is now converted to spring-loaded uh, adjustment. For those who know what the original setup was like, it was two of these black dials either side of this base plate. You would have to fight or adjust the height and then lock off the adjustment when you found the correct height from the nozzle. But in doing that, you were constantly fighting the adjustment because you would have to account for the tightening of the lock nut, which would pull the base further away from the nozzle. So you'd have to sort of adjust it in a way that you, you'd get a feel for it after a while, but it was such a pain in the ass because you'd make one change at another point and then you'd have to come back and probably two or three times going around to each test point to adjust out the, um, the nozzle height. With, well, we're talking about the thickness of a piece of paper and it would become very monotonous and, and get boring real quick. From what I could gather, anyone that had this printer, this spring-loaded adjustment with one adjustment wheel was the way to go. And I haven't actually used the printer yet, given the uh, new system here, but I know from using my other printers and other people's printers that this, this design, for the most part, is pretty um, friendly and you can get your height adjusted pretty quickly. You may need to do two rounds. You start off at this front corner, you go to the back, opposite back, and then around once. And then you want to might want to do a fine tune just to just make sure that when you do go to print, get your bed to temp. In this case, I use it at 60, uh, 50 or 60, depending on what's going on. Um, and then your nozzle set to about 140 or 150. Okay, so the next part of the story is the abundance of wiring. You can see that I've got no brain plugged into this. It's all separate because this has to change. It's got to be upgraded. As far as I'm concerned, this ribbon cable that I've used and then branched out into the JST connectors, is, in my mind, is too light duty. And then when you uh, look at the rest of the wiring, you can see it routed all up and through the, the framework here and up, up the back here. And some of the method they've used for the heat bed and temp. The temp's not so bad, it's two little sense wires. Okay, so you can see the terminal block here for the heat bed. The two uh, single wires that you can see are for the thermistor or the temp sensor. And then you've got wires, well, multiple wires coming in from the ribbon cable and they've done, uh, they've been made up in triplicate. No, there's four wires per. So basically just to handle the current for the heating bed itself, but it just looks, it's a cheap way of doing it. I get why they did it in the first place, but I think for the purpose of this, we can definitely get some uh, multi-core proper, um, appropriately gauged cable and fix this. So that's gonna be another another win in that regard. I mean, th this is probably fine, but it just doesn't look great. And especially when you're looking for faults, um, you may have a break in one or two of these wires on one side of the, uh, the heat bed. And you're thinking, well, why isn't it getting to temp? When you do the testing, everything's got continuity, but what you can't test is uh, current carrying capacity because you've got a broken cable in one of these leads. And that can always lead to, um, you know, just lead you down a rabbit hole and you, you, you're constantly scratching your head. So just, just take it out. Just do one con one conductor per side. So that's going to be a simplification. And on top of that, you're going to have less less of this to hide. At least with the round cable, you can hide it in the, the framework and uh, it's going to look tidy. Probably the most important mod uh, for the K8200 is the Z-axis because anyone... Uh, for those of you that are familiar with, the Z-axis lead screw was a piece of all thread. And that all thread, in my case, led to some of the most awkward looking 3D prints that I've ever seen. Uh, so the best thing you can do is put a nice coupler in and upgrade your lead screw to an eight millimeter. I think it's eight by eight. So it's eight mil diameter with an eight millimeters per rotation. It does come with a nut. So as you can see just up here, that comes with the lead screw. And in my case, inside this casing, 
when it was the all thread um, option, it was just a floating nut inside this casing. And so there's two halves and inside there was uh, just a standard hardware, run of the mill M8 1.25 thread pitch nut. So in, in what, I, what I had done is I was working out how to fit this nut or this lead screw nut to this assembly. So I didn't want to change this too much. It turns out that um, this nut will actually press fit into the existing bottom half plastic here. And it press fits so tight that uh, you've got no, no worries about it rotating or moving for that matter. So yeah, just keep in mind, uh, there's, I've had no issues so far. This has been press fit in there for the last, let's say three years. Uh, I have used the machine with this new lead screw. The, the, the finish to the prints are just second to none. By far the most impressive upgrade modification uh, and the best um, print result has been, well, you have to see it to believe it, I guess. I haven't got any samples on me right now, but if I do manage to find them, I'll take a couple of photos and do a side-by-side -side comparison of what I've printed with before and after, and you can see the result. I don't know if I've got any uh, models that I've printed before and after, so it'll be probably different models, but just have a look at the finish. It's a big, big difference. Anyway, okay, so that, uh, yeah, that gives us an overview of some of the mods to start with, uh, or the mechanical mods at least. I'm not going to go um, too much into the electronic side of things because that's a whole nother, whole nother spiel. Okay, so what you can see in front of you now is the extruder. Uh, I have not touched the extruder as far as any of the mechanics. It's exactly the same. It's just a hob to bolt with a large gear and a smaller gear as it came in the kit. Uh, nothing has changed at all. I do want to maintain the direct drive. I haven't really had any issues apart from a little bit of oozing from where it's not supposed to come from, but I will address that and see what's going on here. Um, as far as my last use of this setup, it's been working fine. Like I say, it's, it's just a matter of fixing this ooze. I think I have replaced, in fact, yes, I have. I have replaced the thermistor for the uh, heating block at one point because the last one failed. It did take me a while to figure out what was going on, um, but yeah, it went open circuit. This setup has been the same since day dot and not had any real issues to change it. I, I am looking to perhaps update it to something that's more modern because this is quite bulky. You can get a lot more integrated system now where the, the stepper motor is um, probably directly driving the feed and, and, that, and that sort of stuff. Um, but overall, this system has worked well. It is a bit archaic at the moment considering there's new models out there and yeah you could adapt this to, to this to this machine no problem at all so that'll be another item i will look at but secondary to the rest of what i want to do i want to get the uh, more now the bed sorted the z axis is sorted this is going to be another area to tackle i think the priority at this point would be looking at uh, perhaps the electronics and making sure that's all good Okay, the keen eyed among you may have seen the belts that I'm currently using. Um, the original belts that came with the machine were quite chunky 5mm pitch uh, units. These are now, I believe they're 3mm pitch and a lot more uh, rounded edges too, rounded um, teeth, tooth belt rather than the HDT which is a trapezoidal shape I believe. Um, that in itself also was another improvement to the quality of the print. Um, so changing to the fine tooth belt uh, resulted in the less cogging. Uh, now, you can imagine the cogging on a tightly wound, well, not tightly wound, but let's say if you see that pulley over here, if you've got quite chunky teeth that's trying to navigate around a quite tight radius, you can imagine it's gonna go chunk, chunk, chunk and, and sort of step through without having a smooth sort of transition around the tight radius like this, a small diameter. So as soon as I did upgrade to a very, well, a finer pitch belt, the actual um, finish in the print quality was just remarkable. Definitely another great upgrade, um, considering what impact it has on your actual overall print and accuracy as well. You get tighter tolerances and that sort of business. So that's another, another good plus, so yeah. The mechanical side is pretty well, as far as mods go, they're straightforward, they're pretty easy. Um, and going on today's sort of 3D printers, today's 3D printers definitely use uh, fine toothed uh, or fine pitch timing belts. And it does result in a much 
much neater, highly detailed prints.